Hilchas Deus Perek Shishi, the Laws of Personal Development, Chapter 6. At the beginning of these laws, as the Rambam does in the beginning of every set of laws, he gives us the list of mitzvahs that are going to be discussed in this set of laws. In our case, Hilchas Deus had 11 commandments. We spent the last five chapters just covering the first one, Lihidamot Bidrachav, to emulate Hashem's ways. Because emulating Hashem's ways is to adopt the middle path in all of our character, as well as to keep healthy nutrition, and also to act like a chacham, act like a wise man whose conduct we detailed yesterday. Today and tomorrow, the last two chapters of these laws, we're going to cover all the rest of the ten mitzvahs. In this chapter, chapter six, we're going to cover mitzvahs two to eight, which is to cling to Talmidei Chachamim, to love Jews and especially converts, not to hate another person in our heart, to rebuke them, not to embarrass them, and not to treat unfortunate people, widows and orphans, badly. And then tomorrow we're going to learn about Lashon Hara, not gossiping, revenge, and bearing a grudge. So here we see again how the Rambam is arranged topically. It's not necessarily one mitzvah goes into one chapter. However many chapters are required for explaining one mitzvah, that's how much we get. If we can squeeze a bunch of mitzvahs into one chapter, they have less laws, that's also fine. The idea is that the Rambam is a topical codification of the entire Jewish law. So let us begin Perek Shishi, the sixth chapter, says the Rambam. Derech briyato shal adam. It is the way of the creation of man liot nimshach bedeotav uvemaasav. To be drawn after, both in his character and in his deeds, achar re'av v'chaverav, after his friends and his fellows. People are social beings. The Rambam writes elsewhere the famous line, ha'adam hu midimi. A person tends to behave like those who he is around. And he will behave according to the custom of those in his province, in his area. It is so important for a person to connect himself to righteous people. And to constantly sit in the company of wise men. So that he should learn from their actions. On the flip side, He should distance himself from those wicked who walk in the dark, so that he should not learn from their actions. In other words, there's no inherent mitzvah or prohibition, according to this halacha, to hang around chachamim or not to hang around wise men. It's all with a purpose. The purpose is you want to have your actions be the best they could be. So hang around those who are going to make your actions better. Don't hang around those who are not going to make your actions better. omer. That is what Shlomo HaMelech says. Holech et chachamim yachkam, he who walks with the wise becomes wise. He who shepherds with the fools becomes bad. The Omer, it also says in the opening verse of Psalms of Tehilim, Ashreha ish vegomer, fortunate is the man that did not sit in the company of wicked people. I should observe, the Rebbe has a letter where somebody tried to write to him that it seems from this Rambam that we should not hang around Jews who are Rishayim. Said the Rebbe, we see clearly in this Rambam that there's no inherent prohibition. The prohibition is only that you don't learn from their actions. But if you're there with a purpose, if you're there to influence them, Certainly it's your job, in the case that you have the capacity for it, to go ahead and influence those Jews to also adopt a better way of life, a more observant way of life, a way more connected to Hashem and His mitzvot. V'chein similarly says the Rambam, im haya bimdina, shamin ra'im. Forget your own personal circle. If you were in a state, in a province, who have bad habits, bad customs, and its people do not walk in the straight path, you should travel, move away to a place whose people are righteous and act in the ways of the good. If all the countries, all the areas that you know, or you've heard about, behave in a bad way, like our times, in, the, in his present day, there wasn't a lot of uh, proper societies. Or you simply can't go, you can't relocate to a good place. Because of troops, the battles between different countries used to often close down main travel roads, or because you're sick. Says the Rambam, better, that you should sit alone, on your own. Don't get involved with people. Sometimes the Torah praises somebody who sits alone and is quiet. That's a person who cannot move around. If they were so bad and so sinful. They, the other people don't let him dwell in this country calmly. Only unless he mixes with them. Or adopts their bad behaviors. 
says the Rambam, and it's not Midat Chasidut, he doesn't say this as a law of piety or beyond the letter of the law, he says, as halacha, you should go out, Yitzay, lama arot v'lachavachim v'lamidbarot, go out to the caves, to the thickets, to the area of thorns, and to the deserts. The alyan higatzmo b'derech hataim, rather than behaving yourself in a way of sinners. Ka'inyan shene'emar, as it says, Yirmiyahu Hanavi said, mi yitneni b'amidbar melon onchim, if only somebody would give me in the desert a hotel, a place to sleep, for guests. In other words, there were some times that he was required to go to the desert. It's important to note because today we see the phenomenon, especially in Chabad, of so many people picking themselves up from fully observant communities and going out to places that are completely forsaken Jewishly. And we say, and the expectation is, that they're going to turn around the community and the community is not going to turn them around. How did the Rebbe take such a responsibility of sending out shluchim seemingly against this Rambam, where a person should actually seek to be around, insulated by those who are more observant. So the Rebbe once explained that this is only talking about a person who's on the level where he knows that he gets influenced by, he, by those who are around him. But if you're machlit betokef, if a person makes a strong decision that he will not get influenced, and rather be an influencer, then to him the Rambam's words don't apply, and in fact he will see success in making sure that uh, the place will actually become better because of him. There's a famous story, they say, in the name of the, pre- the Rebbe's father-in-law, the previous Rebbe, somebody asked him how he takes the responsibility to send shluchim to places that are so far from Judaism, and he gave the analogy, this questioner gave the analogy, that he says, you put a cup of hot water, even if it's boiling hot, but you put it in a massive cold pool, in the end, the hot water is going to become cold like the rest of the pool. Said the Fidik Rebbe, when does that apply if you put the hot water on its own into the pool? But if you, was, if you put a heating element that was connected to the wall, plugged in, and then you put it in the cold water, not only will it not get affected, but ultimately it will change the temperature of the water as well. Said the Friedrich Rebbe, my chassidim are connected to something higher. They're plugged into the wall. And therefore, even when they're in the cold pool, in the end, not that it doesn't transform them, they transform the pool, they transform their surroundings. Halacha base. Now that Rambam adds, besides for the social element of it, and the properness of such a method of behavior, it's actually a mitzvah aseh. It is a positive commandment, one of the 613 mitzvahs, to cling, to stick around, wise men and their students, in order to learn from their actions. In the last halacha, it was a derech briato, it's the way of a person. You want to be good, stick around good people. Now it's actually a commandment, as it is hinted by the topic which says, you should cleave to him. It's a word, that, it's a, a verse that talks about walking in the ways of Hashem. And one of the expressions is, you should stick to Hashem. So the sages ask us, is it certainly possible for a man to cleave to the Shekhinah? The Shekhinah is totally transcendent, totally beyond us. So said the sages in explanation of this mitzvah. Stick to the Chachamim and to their students. Sticking to those people is like sticking to the Shekhinah. Here, of course, we have a remez, a, a hint for the famous concept in Hasidism of a chassid and a rebbe, following a person who is the model human, the model for a connection with Hashem, in a way, it's a mitzvah saseh. It's a po- part of the positive commandment is to hang around and be under their influence. L'fikach says the Ramam, therefore, tzarich adam a person must put in great effort. Sheyisa bat talmit chacham, that he should marry the daughter of a wise person. Ve'yasi bito talmit chacham, he should marry off his daughter to a, a wise person. Ve'le'echol v'lishtot, in Talmidei Chachamim, eat and drink with Talmidei Chachamim, v'la'asot prakmatia with Talmid Chacham, do business with a Talmid Chacham, v'lid chaber le'en, b'chol minei chibur, associate yourself with them, attach yourself to them in all possible ways, shene'emar u'ladov ka'bo, as it also says in another verse, you should stick to Hashem. V'chein sivu Chachamim v'amru, and so commanded our sages, and they said, v'hevei mit'abek ba'afar aglehem, you should dust yourself in the dust of their feet, get dirty, by their feet. In other words, sit in their presence. And drink their words with thirst. Now we move on to the next mitzvah covered in this chapter, the mitzvah of Ahavat Yisrael. Says the Ramam Halacha Gimel. Mitzvah al kol adam. It is a mitzvah on every person. Le'ehov et kol echad ve'echad mi Yisrael kigufo. To love every single Jew like his own body. Shene'emar ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. As it says, you should love your fellow as yourself. The Ramam puts no conditions here. He says it's every single Jew. Later on, way later, in the 10th book of the Rambam, he tells us that there's something to do, that there's limitations that are called re'acha. It has to be your friend, the Torah of the mitzvot. It has to be on your level of commitment to Torah and mitzvahs. You're supposed to hate a rasha sometimes. Here he gives no 
limitation, and the Rambam's rule is that he only relies on what he writes earlier in his work, not what he writes on later. So there cannot be an interpretation that the, the meaning of kol echad ve'echad here is limited to only certain people. Here, the Rambam is telling us that the mitzvah is to love every single Jew. And he uses the word le'ehov, which literally means a feeling, a feeling of love. The mitzvah is to simply feel in your heart love for a fellow Jew. And then the love is supposed to spill over into action. It says the Rambam lefichach, therefore, because you're going to have great love to your friend, tzarich, you should also do things that show your love. L'saper b'shivcho, you speak his praises, v'lachus al mamono, and you show concern for his money, for his property, ka'asher huchas al mamon atzmo, just like you show con- concern for your own property, v'rotzeh b'chvod atzmo, just like you want your own honor. Bamit kabed b'kolon chaveron, on the other hand, if you find honor in your friend's downfall, in your friend's embarrassment, ein lo chilek la'olam haba, you have no portion to the world to come. Yesterday we saw that a chacham, one of the, one of the trademarks of a wise man is that he's misaper b'shava chavero. He tells the praise of his friend. And here, the Ramam seems to be saying it's not part of a chacham's obligation, it's part of every Jew's obligation to love their friend. Part of Avat Yisrael is l'saper b'shivcho. So as the Rebbe, there's a very big difference between last chapter and this chapter. Last chapter is the chacham developing his own character. For his own character's sake, he should be the type of person who only says good things about a friend. Here, we're talking about Ahavat Yisrael as it relates to the other person. So we're talking about a very specific type of Sipur, sipur B'Shevach. It's of saying good things about a friend that will bring your friend direct physical benefit. So it's related to the other more than it's related to yourself. Halacha Dalit. Ahavat Hager, loving a convert, Shabbat Nichnas, Tachat Kanfea Shechina, who came and entered under the wings of the Shechina, Shtei Mitzvot say. When you love him, you are fulfilling two positive commandments. Achat, one mitzvah you're fulfilling, mipneshu b'chlal re'im. He is included in your friends. Va'ahavta l'rei acha kamocha applies to every Jew, including a convert. Va'achat, then you get a special mitzvah, mipneshu hu ger, because he is a convert. Va'atorah amra, va'ahavtem et ha'ger. And Torah says you should love the ger, a specific commandment for the convert. Tziva ala havat ha'ger, kemoshe tziva ala havat atzmo. Hashem, in effect, over here, is commanding us to love the convert, just like he commanded us to love him. Shene'emar va'ahavta et Hashem alokecha. You should love Hashem, your God, it says in the, in the Shema. And what do we know about Hashem? HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ba'atzmo, Ohev Gerim. Hashem himself loves the converts. Shene'emar ve'ohev ger. It says Hashem is described as he who loves the converts. So if we love Hashem, we should love what Hashem loves, including the converts. So when we love a ger, we're also in tandem fulfilling the ahavta et Hashem alokecha, loving Hashem. Halacha hey, now we turn to the negative commandment. Kol hasone, echad mi Yisrael belibo. Anybody who hates, carries hatred in his heart for another Jew, over belotase, transgresses a negative commandment, shene'emar lotisna et achicha bilvavecha, it says in the Torah, you should not carry hatred for your brother in your heart. However, unlike most negative commandments, whose most basic punishment is lashes, if you transgress it, says the Rambam ve'ein lokin alavzer, we don't get lashes for transgressing this lav, this negative commandment, ve'fisha'ein bo ma'aseh, because transgressing it involves no action. The Torah only punishes for physical actions. If you transgress this commandment and carry hatred in the heart, you haven't done anything, so you can't get punished. The law he's hirat Torah, ela al sin'a shebalev. Torah in this commandment is only commanding us against hating in the heart. There is another commandment which has to do with physically expressing that hatred. Aval hamaket chaverov hamachorfo. If someone were to hit his friend, if someone were to curse verbally his friend and embarrass him in that way, afal pishe no rashai, even though that's not allowed, and that's going to be discussed way later in the 10th book of the Rambam in Hilchot Chovel Umazik, the laws of somebody who bruises or damages his friend, no over mishum lo tisna. But in this case, bruising a friend and cursing a friend doesn't transgress this prohibition which we're talking about, which is lo tisna, which is not carrying the hatred. What is the opposite of carrying hatred? What instead should you do? Says the Rambam Halacha Vav, number six, kishiecheta ish li ish. If a man offends another man, one man sins to another, lo yistemenu v'yishtok. He should not carry the hatred in his heart and be quiet. As it says about the wicked, and this is a famous tragic story in the Prophets, Avshalom et Amnon Avshalom, who was a son of David Melech, did not speak anything to Amnon, who was involved with his sister. Bad to good. Kisane Avshalom et Amnon, because Avshalom hated Amnon. In other words, instead of speaking the way he should have directly to him, he carried the hatred in his heart. That's wicked people's behavior. Ella, rather, mitzvah alav lahodi'o. The mitzvah is upon him to notify him. Below Marlon to tell him, Lama asita li kach v'kach. Why did you do this to me? Valama chatata li b'davar ploni. And why did you sin against me in this manner? 
Shanemar, as it says, and the Rambam is of the opinion, when the Torah says rebuke, you shall rebuke your fellow. Typically we understand this to mean in Judaism, in spiritual matters, that if you see somebody doing an Avera that he's not supposed to do in terms of his behavior between man and God, you should rebuke him. And that we're going to get to in a moment. But here the Rambam says that included in the mitzvah of Hocheach Tochiach is rebuking your own fellow for something he did to you in human terms. If he offended you, you cannot carry the hatred. Rather, you must rebuke. In fact, in the Torah, the two verses come one after another. Lo tisna et achicha bilvavecha, hocheach tochiach et amitecha. Don't hate your friend. Rather, you should rebuke him. And once you do, it's not over. Im chazaru bikesh, mimenulim cholo, if the person, upon realizing his mistake, goes back and asks you to forgive him, tzarich limchol, you must forgive him, the lo yehei hamochel achzari. And the forgiver, the person who must forgive, should not be cruel, and withhold forgiveness. Shana'amar, as it says, Vayitpalel Avraham El Ha'elokim. Avraham Davin Ta'ashem. After Avimelech, the king in Gerar, captured, kidnapped his wife, and there was a miracle, and he wasn't able to do anything to her, and, he, and um, she was sent back because the king Avimelech and all of his people in his, in his household became very sick. Avram didn't just go and walk away from town. He Davin, on the, on the behalf of Avimelech, he actually achieved forgiveness for them and, and, uh, and healed them. So here too, you rebuke your friend, you did what you had to do, now he's asking for forgiveness. Do what you have to do next and forgive him as well. It's very interesting that this halacha of being easily forgiving is brought up three times in the Rambam. Once here, a second time, in a couple of weeks we're going to have in Hilchot Tshuva, the final set of laws in this book, the Rambam says the same halacha, and also in Hilchot Chovelu Mazik, which I mentioned before, the laws of bruising your friend, over there also the Rambam brings up this halacha of being easily forgiven. Fascinatingly, over here, the Rambam doesn't write it as a prohibition. He just says, Lo yehei hamochel achzari. He should not be cruel. But in Hilchot Shuvah and later on in Hilchot Chobelo Mazik, both times the Rambam writes, Asur, it is prohibited to be cruel. And uh, the Rebbe explains because over there, in both of those locations, and we'll expound upon it later when we get there, Bezrat Hashem, over there we're talking about achieving atonement. A specific type of atonement that needs to be achieved for the person who did the sin. And that atonement could be stopped if you don't give forgiveness. So for the other person, it's actually prohibited to stop his kapara from coming. Here, in Hilchot Deot, we're talking about a person's own behavior, much more as it, relates, as it relates directly to him. And here, so we cannot say a prohibition. Here we just tell the person, if you want to develop your Deot properly, if you want to fully develop your character properly, as it should be, lo yehe, you should not be. It's ideal not to be cruel, rather you should be easily forgiving. There are other changes that the Rambam makes between here and there, but they're more relevant and those halachot, and we'll explain them as at Hashem when we get there. Now the Rambam goes halacha zayin and details the other side of the mitzvah of hocheach tochiach, rebuke for doing a sin. Somebody sees his friend who sinned or walking on a not a good path. And this is now spiritually between him and Hashem. It's a mitzvah to return him to the good path. And to let him know that he's causing himself sin. He's only hurting himself with his bad deeds. Shana'amar, as it says, and here we see that the verse applies as well, hocheach tochiach et amitecha, rebuke, you shall rebuke your fellow. But there's plenty of rules when it comes to rebuke. It's not a free-for-all pass to lambast another person just to get them back into the good path. Hamocheach et chavero says the Rambam is a number of guidelines for rebuking your friend. When you rebuke your friend, whether it's matters between you and him, from the last halacha, human, human interests, or it's godly interest between him and God. First of all, you can only do rebuke privately. It has to be individually between you and him. When you do the rebuke, you should speak to him pleasantly and with a soft tone. And let him know first, that you're only telling him what you're about to tell him for his good. To bring him to the life of the eternal world, the world to come. After you do so, gently, first time, privately, if the person accepted your rebuke, is good. And if not, you have an obligation to rebuke him a second time and a third time. And even more, constantly, you have an obligation to rebuke him. Ad, the time you know when it's over and you should stop, is ad that the person that sinned actually hits you. V'yomar lo, and tells you, Eni shomea, 
I'm not listening. Then you know it's over and you have nothing more to do. But until then, you got to keep trying. Anybody who has the possibility in his hand to rebuke and does not rebuke, says the Rambam, who nitpas ba'avon elu. He actually gets caught up in the sin of those who did the sin. Because he had the capacity, the ability to rebuke. And he didn't, a part of the sin, he is faulted with a part of the sin. Halacha ches, the Rambam continues the guidelines of rebuke. When a person at first is admonishing, is rebuking his friend, should not speak harshly to the point that he gets embarrassed. This is different than the gentle tone and the pleasant words. Now we're talking about the content of the words. The content of the words could also be spoken harshly to the point that a person gets embarrassed. And here we have a separate commandment. Part of the mitzvah of when the Torah gives us the, the, um, the commandment to rebuke a friend, it immediately follows it up with a qualification. The qualification is, Velo tisa alav chet. Do not lift the sin upon him. Which means, says the Rambam, Kach amru chachamim, so said our sages, Yachol upanav mishtanot, you might think that you can rebuke him and have his face change colors. Talmud lomar, therefore the verse says, right after the commandment to rebuke, Velo tisa alav chet. Do not lift the sin upon him. And it's also meant, you should not be faulted with the sin for doing what you had to do. The way you might be faulted with a sin for doing what you had to do is by embarrassing him. Mikan, from here we see, Sha'asur la'adam la'achlim at Yisrael. A person cannot, it's forbidden, to embarrass another Jew, the kol shekem barabim, and certainly how much more so in public. And now the Rambam says, Afal pisha machlim et chavero, eno lo ke'alav. Even though a person who embarrasses his friend does not get malkut, does not get, does not get lashes for it, avon gadol, who it is a great sin, so said our sages, a person who embarrasses his friend in public, does not have a portion in the world to come. Here we find the expression, he makes his face white. Because that's typically what happens when a person gets embarrassed, the blood drains from his face and he becomes white and pale. Therefore, a person must be very careful, not to embarrass his friend in public, no matter the stature of the person. He could be small, he could be great, makes no difference. Also included in this umbrella of not embarrassing another is velo yikralo b'shem shehu bosh mimenu. You cannot call him by a name that he would be embarrassed from. Velo yisaper lefanav davar shehu bosh mimenu. In his presence, you may not say a story that he'll be embarrassed from. Says the Rambam, b'medvarim amurim, when does the above apply? Talking about something in public, or in a person's presence when he'll be embarrassed. Bidvarim sheben adam lechaviro. That's only if it's human, between man and his friend. Aval bedivrei shamayim, but in matters related to heaven, matters related to Hashem, im lo chazar bo baseter, if you try to rebuke in private, and he didn't return, he didn't go back, he didn't retract his behavior, machlimin oto barabim, then you should, that's the one exception, embarrass him publicly, umefarsamim chet o, and publicize his sin, umecharfim oto befanav, and denigrate him in front of his face, Embarrass, curse him, until he returns to good. As all prophets among the Jewish people used to do. That's what they did for a living. They rebuked the Jewish people to their faces, told them what they were doing was wrong after rebuking in private had been tried. That's the one exception. Of course, this only works if the person is going to take it in. If you know that rebuking him in public is only going to make it worse, then of course, this does not apply. If somebody sinned against a friend, but the person who got offended decided it's not worth it, it's beneath him to get involved and engage with the offender. He didn't want to rebuke him, he didn't want to speak anything to him. Because the person who sinned was a real lowlife. And it didn't even bother him as much. Or his mind was simply confused. He was mentally unstable. And he forgave him in his heart without carrying any hatred and without rebuke. It's actually a pious way of behavior to do that. The Rambam gives us a core rule here. The only particularity that Torah had about this law, about this, this prohibition was the feeling, the negative feeling of hatred in the heart. If you don't carry that negative feeling, you don't have an obligation to rebuke. In fact, it's even better if you stayed away from rebuke and you totally forgave him. 
And now we learn the final mitzvah related to this chapter. Chayav Adam. A person is obligated to be careful in his treatment of orphans and widows. For their soul is very low. Their spirits are very low. And their, and their spirits are low. In other words, they're, they have, they're, they're, they're depressed about themselves. They're walking around feeling very down. Even if physically they have lots of money, it doesn't mean anything for how their heart is. Says the Rambam, even the widow of a king and his orphans, we are warned against them to, to not, not to mistreat them. As it says, every widow and every orphan, you shall not pain. Rather, how should we behave with them? You should only speak with them softly. And only behave with them on a behavior of honor. You should not pain, overwork their bodies with tough work. Neither should you pain their hearts with tough words. And you should show concern for their money more than you show concern for your own money. When it came to Avat Yisrael, the Rambam said to show concern for your friend's money like your own money. Here he says, more than your own money. Anybody who provokes them, who aggravates them, or gets them angry, or causes them pain in the heart, or or he oppresses them, or destroys their money or their property, that he transgresses a negative commandment. And certainly, you didn't just use verbal abuse, but you actually hit them or curse them, that is an even worse level of violating this commandment. The law says that I'm on this commandment too. Even though we cannot give you lashes, the human court cannot hold you culpable for it. Nevertheless, the punishment for this is explicit in the Torah. My anger will flare. And I will kill you by the sword. He who said and brought the world into existence, Hashem himself made a treaty with Yetomim Ve'almanot, Shekol Zman Shehem Tzohakim Mechamas, that any time they cry out, out of being oppressed, not just crying out because of their bad situation, but because they're being hurt by somebody else, Heim Na'anim, they are answered. Shene'emar, as the verse continues, Ki Im Tzahok Yitzak Elai, because if he shall cry out to me, Shamoa Eshma Tzahakato, I will hear his plea, his cry. Ba'med Varim Amurim says that Amam, when does the above apply that you cannot pain? If you're simply painting them to bring about your own needs, to fulfill your own needs, that's no good. But if a teacher were to paint them with a purpose, to teach them Torah or a trade, or to get them back on the straight road, that type of pain is permitted. Even so, you should not behave towards them like you behave towards any person. Make a difference in how you treat them. Lead them along with pleasant ways, with great compassion, and with honor. Because it says Hashem will champion their cause. So you don't want to get in the way of that. Rather, you should treat them differently than you would treat any other person. What qualifies as an orphan? Says the Rambam, You don't have to be an orphan from both parents. An orphan from the father or an orphan just from the mother already qualifies as an orphan. Until when are they considered to be an orphan? A, a child has his father or mother pass away. Are they an orphan till they're 50? Till they're 100? Till when are they called a yatom? Says the Rambam, Until they no longer need an adult, for them to lean on, for him to train them, and for him to take care of them. Once they're on their own, independently, self-sufficient, on their own, they're no longer a yatom, he does all of his own needs for himself, by himself, like any other adult, then he leaves that category, he's no longer a yatom, and the mitzvah or the avera of mistreating them no longer applies.